In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint Death Guard power armour, the equipment and accessories, then finish up by showing you how to paint a Plague Marine's flesh. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint Death Guard Chaos Marines. If you want to know how I get my miniatures ready for painting, make sure to go watch the tutorial I made showing you how. I'll also put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do I have a Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. For this tutorial I chose to paint our Plague Marine in sub assemblies to make it easier. I also chose to undercoat the miniature with some Death Guard green spray because it's going to make painting our Plague Marine much easier. The first place we're going to start is painting the Plague Marine's armour, as this is what the majority of the miniature is made up of. And although we've used Death Guard green spray as a base colour already, I still recommend starting out by painting the armour with Death Guard green from the pot. This is mainly because of the Death Guard green as a spray is not exactly a colour match to the Death Guard green from the pot and you can think of the pot as being the official Death Guard green colour. This will also allow us to clean up any mistakes we may make whilst painting the armour as we'll need to use a Death Guard green from the pot to do this and it won't look so obvious. To make sure we're getting nice smooth solid colours whilst painting our Plague Marine we want to thin our paints first of all and I tend to find an equal amount of water does the trick. Also make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted as this will leave unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. It's also better to paint in multiple thin layers to ensure we're not ruining any detail on the miniature. So let the current layer dry and then repeat the process until you're happy you have that nice solid colour we're after. Plague Marine's armour isn't going to look very clean or polished so we want to make sure we get lots of different tones in character. So the next thing we're going to do is an all over soft shade to the armour using a wash. And to make the wash let's mix together an equal amount of both Ethonian Camo Shade and Lamia Medium. This is going to dilute the Ethonian Camo Shade so it isn't so strong as to change the colour of the armour, but strong enough to give us those different shades and tones. We want to try and avoid the wash from pulling up in detail, and I find just using enough of the wash to cover the miniature comfortably helps with this. If you do find it pulling up too much in areas you don't want it to, you can just use your brush to soak up the excess. You can see our green armour already looks a lot more interesting than it would have if we had just left it the Death Guard green colour. Now we want to define all those details in the armour some more making them easier to see and to do this we're going to be using a recess shade. A recess shade is done by painting a darker shade or colour directly into the recess panel lines and shallow details of a miniature. This allows us to create that definition without affecting the main colour like an all over wash would. For the recess shade on our Plague Marine I'm using Beltan Green and I find using a glaze brush is perfect for the job. It gives us more control as we don't have to worry about overloading the brush with shade and it's able to get into all the smaller details that can be difficult for a larger brush. If you're a bit messy don't worry, you can always neaten up any mistakes as we go along with some of that Death Guard Green from the pot like we talked about. With the soft shade and recess shade done we can now start thinking about building up the colours with some highlights. And I want to go into some detail about the process of highlighting, because if you can highlight well, then you can paint anything. When highlighting, I like to have a brush that I keep separate, so I know I have a brush with a nice point on it when I need to highlight. You also want to think about the consistency of the paint. I find I don't use as much water as I normally would, as this is going to help give us that strong colour without multiple passes we would normally need to do when layering. And finally, it's a good idea to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some kitchen paper before painting which is going to help prevent those thick blobby lines. For the first highlight I'm using an equal amount of both Death Guard Green and Ogren Camo and this wants to be quite a thick line. Take your time painting along all the edges of panels and details because what this is going to do is to help define the shape of the armour. Next is going to be an edge highlight using Ogren Camo and to make this easier you can use the edge of your brush and run it along that edge to paint the highlight. For the areas you can't do this, you have to take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlight. Highlighting is the most time consuming part of painting any miniature, but once you're done it really does make the difference in bringing out all those edges. We're going to finish up with a spot highlight now using Creed Khaki, 
So using the same techniques I've just shown you, you want to pick out the more prominent edges on the armour. If you really want to get fancy, you can use Ogryn Camo to put some texture into the armour. All you need to do is go around painting little marks and scratches, and I find having almost no paint on your brush really helps with this. And when you're done, hopefully you can see that it really was worth all that effort. Now you've finished painting the Plague Marine armour, you can use these same techniques and colours to paint any Death Guard armour. The next details I like to get painted on my miniatures tends to be all the metals, which on our Plague Marine will be all the brass trim and silver details. To paint any brass on your Plague Marine start with some Screaming Bell. Next use some Rune Lord brass to bring out the details. Now give it a wash using some Reichland Flesh Shade. Then finish with an edge highlight using Iron Hand Steel. For any silver details start with some Iron Hand Steel and give this a wash using Agrax Earth Shade. This time we're going to finish by layering the silver back up with Iron Hand Steel. To finish the metals you can use some Nylock Oxide on areas of the brass details to create some corrosion. Let me now show you how to paint some of the different pieces of equipment and accessories you may find on your Plague Marines. Start in with any weapons and details that are going to be black. Start by painting these details using some Abaddon Black. For some of the black details like the bolter and any pipes we can start with some etching grey for a chunky highlight. And then use Dawnstone for an edge highlight. If you want a different tone of black on some of the other details like combat weapons, then I would use Stegadon Green for a chunky highlight and Femrisian Grey as the edge highlight. This will help make all these different black parts stand out from each other. Let's work on something a bit more interesting which is the bone horn sticking out of this Plague Marine shoulder and we can get this painted using a series of washes to get that transition between the colours. Start by painting the horn using some Yushabdi bone, remembering multiple thin layers is better to get a nice solid base colour. Now we're going to be using some shades to get that light to dark tone starting with Seraphin Sapia. And to help with the colour shift we're going to be diluting our shades with an equal amount of Lamy Medium. Whenever we're applying the shade we want to make sure it's an even thin coat and this is what we call a glaze. And once that has dried apply the glaze again but further up the horn this time. Continue using the Sapia glaze up until about the halfway point and once you're happy you're there switch to right flesh shade diluting this again with an equal amount of Lamy Medium. We want to work our way to the very end this time with Reichland Flesh Shade. Just take your time making sure to let each layer of the glaze dry before you do another one. And if you want to go a bit darker, you can end with some Norn Oil. To finish the horn, apply the Reichland Flesh Shade in 20 cracks and then paint a fine highlight using Screaming Skull. Something that is prominent on all Death Guard are these pustules and boils. To paint these, start with a base colour of Avalon Sunset. Next apply a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade, layer the boils back up with Avalon Sunset and finish up with a highlight using your Shabti Bone. One of the last details you may come across would be capes or some kind of cloth, so how I would paint these would be to start with some Screamer Pink. Then apply a wash of Norn Oil all over and once that's dried paint a chunky highlight on the raised folds and along the edges with some Mephiston Red and finish the cloth with some Kizla Flesh. With all these details done, the only thing that's left that I want to show you is how to paint a Plague Marine's flesh. You may have some Plague Marines with exposed flesh or even tentacles, so let me finish this tutorial showing you how you can get these details painted. We want to start with painting these areas using Kizla flesh. Now paint all the raised detail using Flayed One Flesh to start bringing out all that detail. Once you've finished doing that, let's create some more definition using a wash of Magos Purple and an equal amount of Lamy Medium over these fleshy areas. And then using the same technique of glazing like I showed you on the horn, you can create some nice transitions using the same diluted Magos Purple mix. Finish these areas by layering up the raised detail with Flayed One Flesh again. Our Plague Marine is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint some of your own. 
I have plenty of other tutorials on the channel which are all filled with useful advice and information you can apply to anything when it comes to painting miniatures. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. And make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.